I hope this message finds you well, both in health and in spirit. Thank you for the trust and the confidence that you place in both myself and the team of Forum Private Client Group. I consider it a great honor to help you and your families, both in the prosperous times, but even more so during these trying times when you're asked to maintain confidence in your plan, even while the current benefit seems invisible. While it feels so unusual to worry about our own health during these times, we must not forget about our loved ones and our responsibility in doing our part to help flatten the curve. Likewise, there are long-term investment disciplines that we know are hard at work during these times, even while we can't see them. I wanted to spend some time highlighting those with you so that we can each maintain our conviction during these trying times. Please take a few minutes to watch the short video I've prepared. On this page, we show our quilt chart, showing the average returns for a range of different asset classes for a 15-year time period. It has everything from stocks and bonds to cash and commodities. Cutting through the middle of the chart is a hypothetical blend or a diversified portfolio composed of different weights of these asset classes. Specific weights are listed in the footnote at the bottom of the page. And on the far right hand side of the chart, we show both the annualized return and the annualized volatility over the 15 years for all of them. Now to a couple of important points. First, it would have been impossible historically to predict what the next hot asset class would have been from year to year. Sometimes you see safe haven asset classes like bonds end up at the very top of the chart, only to end up at the very bottom of the chart the following year and so on. Second, the diversified portfolio that's in light gray that moves through the center of the page is never at the top, but it's also never at the bottom of the page. And that's exceptional, showing that diversification has done exactly what it's supposed to do. Zooming in on the last two columns, we can see that the diversified portfolio has an impressive 15-year annualized return with one of the lowest volatilities. A final takeaway would be that even though the last 15 years have been very difficult, we've seen natural disasters, financial crises, wars, market crashes, along with a number of unexpected geopolitical events. Despite, despite all of those, the basic diversified portfolio would have achieved an annual return that was significantly higher than that of cash. For its investors, for investors, it's important to remember that staying invested, even during difficult market periods, even like the last 15 years, is probably better than sitting on the sidelines and waiting for the market peace and calm that will likely never come. Diversification has proven itself to be a winning strategy. This page speaks to the importance of two things, the first being time and the second being diversification through a sweet and simple example. On this page, we show returns of stocks, of bonds, and of a 50-50 blend of stocks and bonds. That is the simplistic version of diversification. And what we're showing here is the very best and the very worst return for each of those three asset classes over different time periods, the one, five, 10, and 20 year rolling periods. The first observation is simple. If your time horizon is only one year, Almost anything can be expected in the stock market. Historically, we have seen one year range of outcomes as good as 47% on the upside and as bad as 39% on the downside. A large range of outcomes is possible for a one year time horizon. For investors who can, it's important to have a longer time horizon. 
Using the example of five, 10, or 20 year rolling periods, the range of return outcomes shrinks in size and is much more positive. That is, time is on your side. With the volatility of returns shrinking as the investment time horizon gets longer. Lastly, zooming in on that 50-50 blend portfolio, we can see that the diversification strategy never had a negative return for the rolling five, 10, or 20 year period, making the case yet again for diversification in a simple but compelling way. The more time you have and more diversified you are, the less risk there tends to be in the long run for experiencing volatility or negative return potential. This is an important page in the guide to the markets. It speaks both to the importance of diversification and the damaging impact of investor behavior. The chart on the top shows the path of three model portfolios. The two blue lines rep represent a 60-40 stock bond and a 40-60 stock bond model portfolio, while the olive green line represents the S&P 500 index alone. Now the punchline is that all three portfolios more or less end up in the same place. And that would be great if it wasn't for the ride and how they got there being so different. I think we can all agree as investors, it's that the journey is just as important as the destination. While the S&P 500 portfolio lost about 50% of its value during 2008, the diversified portfolio lost half as much as that. As well, the diversified portfolios have had much smoother rides upwards since then. The rest of the chart perhaps is even more compelling. Despite the fact that the green line or the stock market has had a 200 plus percent run and outperformed a broadly diversified portfolio every year since 2009, the account values for those hypothetical diversified portfolios would have still been higher throughout the entire experience because the portfolios lost less during the downturn. One last observation is that while the equity portfolios had an impressive rebound and the bull market has had an impressive rebound, behavioral biases and risk attitudes imply that many investors likely were not able to stomach the volatility and the magnitude of the downturn. This may have meant pulling out of the market at the exact wrong time and never being a part of the ride back up. Now, late cycle with the pure equity market portfolio once again outperforming its diversified counterparts, this message is once again timely as ever. As bonds are the umbrella necessary for the next storm. Looking at the chart on the bottom, on the far right hand side, there's an orange bar labeled average investor. Now this average investor bar is based on an annual study done by an organization called Dalbar, which measures and looks at the totals as well as the timing of mutual fund flows by individual investors. Now, unfortunately, year after year after year, the conclusion is the same. Due to emotional biases, behavioral biases, and the like, mutual fund flows for the average investor have achieved an annualized return of only 2% per year over the last 20 years. Now, this is significantly lower than the 10 other asset classes that we show on the page. This orange bar effectively represents doing all the wrong things at all the wrong times for what appears to be the right reasons. And this embodies all the behavioral biases individual investors can have. On the left-hand side, by contrast, a simple 60-40 blend of stocks and bonds, as well as a 40-60 blend of stocks and bonds show much better results. So the message here is that the average investor should leave emotions out and have a plan and stick to that plan. Reasonably, the plan should involve some form of diversification. So simply put, diversification is a 
critical importance during downturns. And now that we are nine years into a bull market, it's still as crucial as ever. Again, this slide shows the importance of diversification and how this has benefited our portfolios first quarter of 2020. You will notice on the left, the returns of equities only, bonds only, and a 60-40 portfolio. On the right, you will see that the market has forced a rebalancing of that 60-40 portfolio to more of a 50-50 portfolio. This forced rebalancing will continue during volatile times in an effort to lighten the blow to portfolios. Remember, it's like a teeter-totter. When our stocks are down, our bonds are up. They're on the rise. If you have any questions after going through this, feel free to contact me at any time. Like many of you, I'm working from home, but my office number is ringing to my cell phone. Also, my cell phone number is 317-319-2508, and feel free to use that at any time. I'd much rather you give me a call and we have a conversation than for you to sit home and worry. Have a blessed Easter, and I look forward to our next meeting being face-to-face. -face.